two, three, four. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Power of Music Thinking. My name is Christoph Zürn, and this is the podcast for people with a musical heart and a wicked job. We're looking for stories, insights, and tools from the big world of music to inspire leaders and followers to listen, tune, play, and perform in whatever field you're operating. Good day. Nice that you listen again to The Power of Music Thinking. It has been a while since the last episode. The episode with Charles Brooks photographer and cellist that talks about his career in orchestras all over the world and how he makes his incredible pictures inside musical instruments. So please check out the website on musicthinking.com for the show notes and some of his incredible pictures and you still can listen to this episode. Okay, this episode or the last episode that was nearly two months ago. And you might have asked yourself if I have taken a break or some kind of sonic sabbatical. Well, something like this. Let me explain. The last month, I was busy with listening. And that on many levels, as you can think. So some of them I will share with you today, literally. For example, I did some experiments with field recordings, like on the busiest roundabout in the Netherlands. I was wondering how it sounds when you are in the more or less quiet middle of everything and cars are circling around you. So it's like being in the middle of a mess and you just listen to the mess instead of just uh, interfering. And I've been in my birth town in the south of Germany where since more than, f than more or less 400 years, uh, on every Sunday four musicians climb the steps to the church tower to play a choral on every of the four balconies. So this is a tradition that they do since many years. And this time around Easter, when visiting the family, I made a recording of it and also had the chance to enjoy the view and the playing from the inside of the church tower. And furthermore, I had the pleasure to teach a whole day at the Design Academy in Eindhoven, um, about how music thinking can help you with co-creation, human-centered design, and how everything is connected, how you can organize the creative output and listen. So the title was Quantum Listening, which I got from a book from Pauline Oliveros. But I will tell you more about it in a few, in a few minutes. And in April, I started as a part-time lecturer for creative business at the University of Applied Science in Utrecht, where I started teaching interactive experiences. There's a lot to say about this, and I will do this in another episode. So please stay tuned and hear more about it on another day. So today, I am not in conversation with an extraordinary person that is also a musician, Today I will share my activities around listening, sound and music thinking. Oh yeah, and yeah, the Power of Music Thinking podcast was celebrating its second anniversary on the 19th of May. And the book, The Power of Music Thinking, is one year on the market. And as we speak, I'm producing a six-part series of about, let's say, 15-20 minutes on different chapters from the book. So, if you're interested in how music thinking works, what it is, and how to apply this in your work, stay tuned, subscribe to the podcast. I will start this hopefully next month. So, there's a lot to do and share. And if you have special requests, a, um, a question, a suggestion for a guest I should invite to the show, so please let me know via podcast at musicthinking.com. But first, let's start with the listening. Here's a short excerpt from the other day at the roundabout. You hear cars starting, cars driving by, people on a bike passing by, and the steady beat from the red light and green light for the pedestrians.
So unbelievable sounds in the middle of a roundabout. Let's hear more about it. just realize if you might hear this in the car this will be a really strange experience so let's let's fade out a little bit and uh, and then uh, tell me more about it so the last was a car with a hanger, and at the very end you hear the ticking, like a metronome, of the of the red light. Uh, what I did, and uh, let's see how long we do this, maybe we just do one or two minutes. Um, I took this recording, this field recording, and I put two more tracks to it, and one was transposed, let's say an octave lower, so you hear the same timing, but an octave lower, and a fifth higher. And I will give you that sound experience. So where I put the, the lower sound in the middle, the original on the left, and the transposed, uh, fifth transposed on the right. So just enjoy listening with me together at the roundabout in three different ways. So, different experience with the original on the left. So, you could maybe mostly hear people talk. So, that's interesting. So, we because we know what it is, we can recognize what it is. Then on the right channel, the fifth, the fifth higher. So, that's more an abstract sound, like a bzzz, we don't know what it is. And in the middle... Um, la, yeah, the octave lower, which is most of the time more like a, a background background noise. So um, I'm fascinated about just sitting somewhere and listening, and that's something that you can also do. Um, if you have time, take a place, just sit there. Don't look at your phone, your smartphone, or don't, yeah, don't, don't read anything, just relax, <sighs> breathe in, breathe out, and listen to what's already there. And you will be yeah, surprised by what interesting sounds you will, you will hear. So as a listening and also as a deep listening um, exercise, it's like every sound is a beginning, a middle, and an end. And yeah, enjoy. Okay, so this was our first listening listening experience today. Also a little bit different than all the other episodes. And now we go into um, to another one, to the next listening. So another listening journey, as I already mentioned, brought me back to my birthplace. A small village, or town I have to say, with about 8,000 inhabitants now, 
and it was much less many years ago, in the south of Germany. And, okay, this is the sound I heard more or less every Sunday from a distance. So it always started with two strikes of the bell, because it's 11.30, and then you hear that sound. So on Easter Sunday I had the chance to make this recording uh, directly from outside the church and also had the chance to climb the stairs alongside the belfry to a space or room with four doors. And every door leads to a balcony with a beautiful view on the city. And every Sunday since the 17th century, four players from the Musikverein play a short choral from every balcony so you hear the same musical piece in four different directions and many distances, depending on where you are. So first we, we heard the choral directly from the outside of the church, so the musicians high above playing into my direction while I'm standing with the back to the town hall in the middle of the city. And the left side now was in the direction of the, the river Yaxt stream. And now we hear them on the right, so in the direction of the upstream of the city. So now again they get into the room above and now they go to the opposite side and that was the direction where I lived as a kid. So what we now hear in a, in a lower volume is actually now at the back from where the microphone is positioned and in, into the direction of uh, one of the, 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 little, the little hills, the three hills where... 
where, uh, yeah, that uh, we are part of the city. So like in a, in a, in a symphony, the ending is different, so it's, everything is going uh, with a low volume. You hear a car approaching, people talking. So a great sonic ritual and spatial experience with a long tradition. And for me, not only a child memory, but a sound that can be heard until today. Wow. If you think that they're doing this since uh, 400 years, so... Yeah, for me, this is also the power of music thinking. It starts with listening and then understanding that every direction is part of the same system or the same town in this case, as you will. And music is such a great way to make this more present. All right, talking about the difference between hearing and listening, uh, let's let's go to to a next um, to to the next episode. Uh, this one is without a musical um, sample. Um, so this was my teaching day at the, uh, at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Um, the students of one of the world's leading design schools, I have to say, uh, asked their organization to integrate sound design more into their curriculum. And if you are um, a listener to The Power of Music Thinking, you know that I did an interview um, or a conversation together um, with the director of the Design Academy, which is a conductor. And that's very interesting. So first, um, you can go back to, 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 to that episode with Raf de Koenig and uh, listen to it and then think that this was more or less some kind of follow-up. So um, to make a start, they decided to do a two-day inspirational prelude with workshops, lectures and happenings organized by the students during the holiday week in May. And I had the pleasure of doing a one-day immersion into listening with your whole body and the power of music thinking. And because these two days were about sound design and making sound, my approach was, uh, first we should listen to what is already there before we start designing any sound. And so you, you now heard two examples of sound that is already uh, already there so the roundabout and also the the village so you understand that this is a part of um, if we are making new things we have to understand that there are already things and we have to make sense or meaning out of this and surprisingly there were a lot of students that like that approach um, it is by the way also an approach to connect design with the environment without being offensive so it's like yeah like Listening is such a powerful thing um, that um, everybody understands. And we did activities and interventions based on questions like what is sounding? So actually what you just heard and what you can do now if I am quiet. You can hear what is already there. And if you listen closely, if you focus your listening, then you try to understand and you listen much more. There's always much more in the room or out of the room or even inside of, uh, inside of us and that can be listened and that is a part of our presence. So the question, how can we listen more deeply, 
And that's not only for designers. That's like any business is. Um, it's a big question to to try to 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 ask and try to find an answer to it. Um, and in the case of Pauline Oliveros, she did, uh, she did some text scores, like the, for example, um, the one like for the extreme slow walk. So first you get an introduction, you get a grounding, you get a sense of of the room, and then then you do or we did uh, for half an hour an extreme slow walk. And if you want, I can put, um, you can have a look in, in the show notes. I will put there the, the, the instruction to it. And it's really interesting how you can immerse in sonic meditation and also listen with your whole body because walking and listening, listening with your two ears and walking very slowly with your two feet is something that really connects uh, together. So I also talked about the dynamic strategy of the framework of music thinking. So that's where music thinking is all about, how you can combine jamming, opening and sensing with empathy, listening and understanding, and personality being and becoming. So think about a company or as a person, you're always in some kind of being and you always go into a becoming because you change uh, every day and in score and agility and remix and how this everything goes together and um, how you can use this for your project and uh, your personal development so these were the things that what we what we did on that day and and what is interesting for students might also be interesting for you and your organization so first listen and then do um, it's actually the way musicians improvise and have a look to other music thinking interventions on our website or in the course of a few you find a lot of different interventions like the master class or a musical customer journey and the fundamentals course so um, i will leave it like this for for today um, and just drop us a note if you if you um, yeah with your own maybe special unanswered question and also, if you like this kind of uh, specials. But there's one thing. The next episode will already be in a few weeks. I think well, maybe two weeks. Um, and I will have, again, a conversation with an extraordinary guest. So it's the former CEO of the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. Yes, that is the only orchestra to date that is always playing without a conductor. So be prepared to hear a lot about leadership and followership and the art of science learning. And please subscribe to the podcast and be one of the first to listen to this. So thank you and yeah, hear you on another day and another episode. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate this because listening is one of the top leadership skills and I feel honored about this. It is my mission to find, create, and share inspirations for meaningful collaboration based on music analogies. If you want to support this, please subscribe to the podcast, give us a rating, or write a review on iTunes or Spotify. And more inspirations can be found on musicthinking.com. We have a blog, and you can download the Music Thinking Framework. And finally, I would love to hear your feedback. And if you need help with a business challenge, please reach out to me via email podcast at musicthinking.com.